One of the most enjoyable neighborhoods to explore in Amsterdam is the Jordaan, which has become extremely popular for visitors in recent decades with its many shops, several different street markets, cafes, restaurants, canals, and narrow lanes. There's a casual outdoor bar scene and unique shops individually owned and with a lot of character offering vintage and handmade items. Crossing over an old-fashioned drawbridge, we're entering Jordan from the north end, which begins at the Brouwersgracht Canal. Often considered one of the most beautiful canals of Amsterdam and forming the northern border of Jordan, and to the east, we have another border canal, the Prinsengracht. Right alongside that canal, you'll find one of Amsterdam's many lively street markets, the Nordmark. And sometimes you'll get jazzy street entertainment, as we found this morning. Every Monday morning, it's a flea market selling fabric, some food, secondhand clothing, old shoes, records, etc. And on every Saturday, it's a biological food market selling a wide range of ecological products like organic fruits and vegetables, herbs, mushrooms, and cheese. We'll get more of this market and music at the end of the program. Although Jordan does not have a lot of canals running through it, there are some beauties, such as this further south. We'll be starting in the north part of Jordan in our visit and working down south towards this canal and beyond. That hungry swan is looking for a handout, but it seems like the people are not paying attention, wrapped up in their little worlds. If you really want to get off the beaten track, take a walk around the Jordan neighborhood. It's mostly residential and has quiet little narrow streets. There's shops, of course, and cafes and bars and restaurants. The streets here are perpendicular, they're straight, and yet it's pretty easy to get lost because there's no obvious landmarks when you're walking around. And even if you have a map, you might inadvertently take a right turn when you thought you were taking a left turn and you end up on the opposite side of the district. It's possible. Jordan is an enjoyable, comfortable place to live with an artistic bohemian atmosphere. Something like New York's Greenwich Village or Soho that has attracted a critical mass of hip residents. There's a peaceful atmosphere since it's slightly removed from the tourists and commercial center of town, yet it's just 700 meters away from the Dom Square, an easy 10 minute walk. It's a reasonably quiet neighborhood. Of course, there's the odd scooter going through and the occasional jackhammer. They've got to do a lot of maintenance here with these old buildings. But this is about as quiet as it gets in Amsterdam. There's a few cars can come through here, but not much, not too many people, but uh, it's a fun place to just wander around. Some of the streets here used to be canals, but they were filled in a long time ago to create more solid land for buildings and cars and people, such as here at Lindengrock, one of the biggest streets in the area. Altogether, seven of the canals in Jordan were filled in to create an expansion of the usable land. That made wide, busy streets with traffic and shops. But the side roads here are quite narrow and peaceful and semi-pedestrian. You can walk in the street, but there will be a few cars going by, so keep your eyes and ears open. Most buildings here are quite old, dating back originally to the 17th and 18th century, typically five stories high in a medium density. By the 1890s, there was 85,000 people crammed into 11,000 apartments, making it one of the world's most densely populated zones. Today, the quality of life is very high with a reduced population of just 20,000, many of whom are well-paid professionals because this has become a very expensive neighborhood. It's gentrified. There's an exotic variety of ethnic restaurants, avant-garde art galleries, practical shops like hair salons and eyeglass stores, all of which creates a quite modern and holistic community. This urban concentration nowadays offers lots of amenities like restaurants on the corner, little markets for daily purchases with apartments on the upper floors. 
And of course, being Dutch, they've always got their canals for boating recreation. You'll see all kinds of boats out, big and small, including some that you have to pedal for propulsion and others where you can sit back and enjoy one of the famous tour boat rides of the Amsterdam canals, something you must do when visiting this city. Some canals like this are smaller in scale than those famous waterways. They're more narrow, they're shorter, but this gives them much more charm. It is incredibly beautiful down here. This canal is just 500 meters long and it's so attractive it would be worth it to walk the whole distance. And then you could actually go around the block on two other canals while also exploring some of those side lanes. Typical of Jordan, it's a residential neighborhood, but there's always some shops that will catch your interest. Tallest church tower in Amsterdam at 85 meters. Vestertoren can be seen from some parts of Jordan, even though it's just outside the district. It is fun and easy to simply wander through the little back lanes of this fascinating neighborhood, spiced up with independent art galleries. You cannot get too lost since it is bounded by canals all around it, and it has straight streets that are simple to navigate. And you'll find there are signs on nearly every corner in that typical Dutch efficiency to help you figure out where you are. These old buildings originally provided low-cost housing for the working-class laborers who built the city for hundreds of years. It was a poor neighborhood known for its radical politics and love of music and beer. However, in the early 20th century, the neighborhood continued to deteriorate buildings falling down, sewage backing up, so much so that by the 1930s, the city had a plan to demolish the entire neighborhood and build modern housing. Fortunately, community opposition held up and fought against this plan for many years and successfully won the battle to preserve it. But then the rents started going up and in the 1960s, many of the original residents moved out to more affordable locations. In recent decades, the gentrification accelerated and like in many cities, property values have skyrocketed because it's one of the most desirable neighborhoods of Amsterdam and a great place to visit. We end up back at the street market that we started at, where I'm going to leave you for a couple of minutes to enjoy the music and sight of this colorful flea market.
community music it is. Yeah. My name is Jos. Jos? Jos. And the lady? Uh, Septimia. We play along, we play all, the, all, all around the world. We have a couple of dozen videos about the Netherlands covering nine of the most interesting towns in addition to Amsterdam. Be sure to look for them in our collection.